Are you looking to get started with eBay dropshipping in 2020, but you don't know exactly where to get started? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what to do step by step, what you need to do and what you need to avoid in order to see success with eBay dropshipping in 2020. So be sure to smash that like button. This video is going to be a good one. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to do in order to get started. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and there's a lot of people teaching you techniques that aren't going to result in actual results further on down the road. It could work for a week, could work for a few months, but it's not going to work in the long term. And that's what we want to be focusing on here. There's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of things to not do with eBay dropshipping. And eBay has pretty much laid them all out for us. All we need to do is follow those rules and we will see success. So let's get started. Let's go inside of my computer where I will go ahead and show you exactly what you need to do and exactly what you need to avoid if you're a beginner trying to start eBay dropshipping in 2020. So one of the first things to talk about is what you should not do. And first off, it says right here in the dropshipping policy on eBay's website, just Google eBay dropshipping policy and you'll be able to find it out. It says dropshipping where you fulfill orders directly from a wholesale supplier is allowed on eBay. So you are allowed to drop ship on eBay. A lot of people say, oh, eBay doesn't allow you to drop ship. Yes, they do. It's literally right here. It takes two seconds to find with one Google search. It says drop shipping, also known as product sourcing, is when you buy a stock from a supplier and work with them to send the items directly to your buyers without ever handling them yourself. It's allowed from wholesale suppliers. Remember that if you use drop shipping, you're still responsible for safe delivery of the item within the time frame stated in your listing for the buyer's overall satisfaction satisfaction with their purchase. Number one thing to realize is that most people running a dropshipping business are looking for a get rich quick scheme and they're looking for something easy. Dropshipping is a legitimate business that you need to actually go out of your way to learn everything about and actually provide great customer service. This is the number one issue that eBay has with dropshipping in general. Back in the day in 2018, 2017, when I started, people were just listing up huge amounts of items from Amazon and selling them on eBay and making tons of sales. eBay wasn't flagging anybody. eBay wasn't doing anything like that. And honestly, people were running a muck. They were running terrible businesses and it wasn't allowing the customers to actually have, you know, great customer service and there was no buyer satisfaction actually happening. They were getting screwed over pretty much and that's why eBay stopped it. So eBay started flagging accounts towards the end of 2018, which means they would lower your impressions in search so that not as many people would see your items no matter what. So it's pretty much the equivalent of getting shadow banned on a platform like Facebook or Instagram, if you ever heard of that term. You could have all these listings up, but people wouldn't be able to see them, therefore they wouldn't buy them. So that's where this comes into place. If we look at the second part right here, it says, however, listing an item on eBay and then purchasing it from another retailer or marketplace that ships directly to your customers not allowed. So anything like Amazon onto eBay, Walmart, Home Depot on eBay is not allowed. So I know I did say that yes, we need to be following the rules and we can easily, you know, succeed with eBay dropshipping. So in order to actually follow the rules 100%, it means that you should only be doing wholesale dropshipping and using wholesale suppliers. But if you do follow my journey or if you have been here for a while, you do know that I also still do use retail suppliers. So technically I'm not even following my own rules as to what I'm telling you to do. The main thing here is that you don't wanna be using the main retail suppliers that eBay knows that everybody drop ships on to eBay. That's the Amazons, the Walmarts, the Home Depots. Right now it's at the end of July in 2020 and eBay had recently gone through a whole entire flagging spree about two weeks ago where they flagged a bunch of accounts. And the main common denominator here is that everybody was using Walmart or Amazon. So in the past it used to be that they were only targeting Amazon sellers onto eBay, but now it seems to be also Walmart and also Home Depot as well. So if you can stay out of those, stay out of the way of using those suppliers, then you should be fine. It also goes to note here that it says activity that doesn't follow the eBay policy could result in a range of actions, including but not limited to ending or canceling your listings, hiding or demoting your all your listings and search results. So people that are saying that flagging isn't real literally says it right here, hiding or demoting all listing from search results, lowering, accelerating, buying or selling restrictions, loss of buyer, seller protections and account suspension. So pretty much they're pretty serious about it. But again, from everything I've seen, if you can use obscure retail suppliers like I teach inside of my eBay dropshipping course, then you should be fine. I haven't had an account flagged since the end of 2018 when I was using strictly Amazon onto eBay. So with that being said, that's the dropshipping policy. Now let's get into what their terms of service is for their using their API. And after that, we're gonna go into what you should actually be doing dropshipping on eBay in 2020 as a beginner so that you can have a step-by-step -step blueprint on how to get started. So not to confuse anybody with fancy computer science mumbo jumbo, but what the API stands for is application programming interface 
And what it allows for is a platform like eBay to go out of its way and allow other programs to be able to code into eBay. So it can pull data from eBay, put data into eBay, and it's just a quick and easy way to actually transfer information and for applications to pretty much build in. All the big software out there have API, Amazon, anything really has API. And it's really just a way for programs and application developers to connect into these programs and make even more robust software and programs around it. So any program kind of like Inkfrog or even Shopify, they can all connect into eBay, allow for the transfer of information across multiple different platforms, facilitating you'd have an easier selling experience. If you type in eBay's API terms of service or their license agreement, you can scroll down to whatever page I'm on, which is I think six, and look at number 9.7. This is what you're not allowed to do, restricted activities. So it says in 9.7 right here, you're not allowed to, it's restricted activities to use eBay services to promote or engage in seller arbitrage, which is retail arbitrage, Amazon onto eBay, Walmart onto eBay, Home Depot onto eBay. For example, automatically repricing eBay listings in response to price changes on competitor sites. So any software that connects into eBay's API, which you know you will be able to see anytime a software is connecting into eBay's API, it will pop up a pop-up box saying, oh, do you want to connect this software into eBay? That's connecting into the API. So you are not allowed to use software that allows the repricing of items from a marketplace in response to price changes at the marketplace or retail web. Website. It also says automatically ordering sold items from competitor sites. So that's pretty much the same thing. Anything that has Amazon auto ordering or Walmart auto ordering and posting tracking information to eBay when items are purchased from competitor sites are shipped. So again, anything that will do automatic connect into eBay API based tracking information uploading, you're not allowed to use. So what software are you allowed to use? You're allowed to use SKU Grid non-API because it's not connected to eBay's API. It goes through eBay's file exchange, which is a different platform or a different way for a platform to connect in to it. You're not allowed to be using any form of repricing tool like the old sale freaks or the old auto DS or even DSM tool. You will get your account flagged most likely and pairing that with using retail suppliers and breaking the dropshipping policy altogether, you are pretty much bound to get flagged and that's pretty much a given and that's what we've seen over the last about a year now. So what are you allowed to use and what are you allowed to do and how should you get started and I'll explain that in the following steps. So let's break down what you can do now after we've gone over all the things you can't and shouldn't do. So number one thing you can do is what we call wholesale drop shipping. You can find wholesale drop shipping suppliers and I have a lot of videos and a whole entire playlist on how to do this. Pretty much a wholesale supplier is any company out there that's buying from the pretty much the brand, the distributor, whoever the creator of this product is. They're usually buying in bulk from them, holding in their warehouses, and you buy from them in wholesale. When you buy in wholesale, it means that you're not gonna be paying any sales tax. You don't really need to deal with tax exemption. It's pretty much given right off the bat. And at that point in time, you could either buy in bulk from them or drop ship their items if they have a drop shipping program. So since we are talking about eBay drop shipping in this video, I will talk about Inventory Source. It's the number one program that we teach inside of our wholesale drop shipping course. It has a bunch of wholesale drop shipping suppliers. It's a software that really only facilitates drop shipping automation software an integrated supplier network. It's one of the only actual softwares out there that I've seen that is strictly wholesale drop shipping across the board, doesn't have any retailers at all, and has been doing this for a long, long time. You can drop ship items from these suppliers after you get accepted through inventory source onto pretty much any platform out there. They have a whole list of the platforms. You could list onto pretty much anything and be selling on any platform, eBay, Amazon, Shopify, Walmart. It doesn't really matter. There's tons of them. They have about 270 plus different suppliers already pre-built and pre-integrated into their actual program. They do offer auto ordering on a lot of these items. And remember it did say auto ordering wasn't allowed, but that's facilitating auto ordering from retail suppliers. These are wholesale suppliers and you are allowed to be doing auto ordering it's pretty much the standard in the industry as you get larger. From that point in time, you can also reprice your items and do your stock and do everything like that through inventory source because of the fact that it's not retail suppliers. The software does not facilitate retail arbitrage and it does in fact connect through the API. So I remember about two years ago or a year and a half ago, everybody was saying don't use the eBay API at all. And that was more of just a generalization because a lot of people out there 
didn't even understand what an API was. So saying you can use this and you can't use this program was pretty confusing, but I tried to break it down for you guys the best I possibly could inside of the video earlier. So using wholesale suppliers to drop ship onto eBay is perfectly fine, perfectly allowable. Been doing it for a while now and there's really no issues whatsoever. You run a very low risk of getting your account flagged. There is some possibility that I've even heard of people getting their account flagged that weren't even doing drop shipping in general. So maybe eBay system just isn't 100% up to date or you know, it's just not perfect. No system is perfect. But you need to realize that there's always some inherent risk with running business no matter what, but drop shipping is probably one of the most risk averse business models that you could possibly do out there because of the fact that you really don't have any risk of buying items up front and you're really not losing any money because you're only buying when the item's actually sold. From here, you would go about finding a supplier inside of inventory source, connecting it to your account, and then going ahead and listing items. After that, the item gets sold. If the item sells, then you just go to your supplier, whichever it is, and order it yourself. Or if you have auto ordering set up, then you can easily do it that way. This program is a little bit pricey, but again, with wholesale dropshipping, you have the safety of knowing that you're doing the right thing on eBay. And you also have the ability to list a ton of items up front because a lot of these suppliers do have thousands and thousands of items. So secondly, we'll go into what I still do for retail drop shipping onto eBay. I do do wholesale also on a different account, but I still do do retail, even though it says not to be doing it. What I usually do is go about finding suppliers on a platform like Skewgrid. Skewgrid is going to give you a list of over 450 US-based suppliers, some of which are wholesale suppliers, some of which are the big three retailers, Amazon, Walmart, and Home Depot, and then some of which are just obscure suppliers. Obscure suppliers is what you wanna be going for. Retail websites that look good, that not everybody really talks about, and you know, not everybody is using out there. eBay is going out there and really just targeting people that are using the main suppliers that they know about. If you can go out there and use suppliers that they don't know about or aren't actively on their radar, then you're usually good to go. I haven't heard of anybody that uses the main suppliers that I use or anything like that actually getting their account flagged ever. And I highly doubt it will really happen as long as you're running a great store, providing great customer service, and doing everything that you should be doing as a dropshipping store owner. So if you scroll through this list, I came about one that I would use as an example. It's called Appliant Zone. I clicked right here and just right off the bat, I realized first off, the website isn't that great. There's probably not a lot of people using this website, but they do have a lot of parts and other things that you could be selling on eBay. And I have in fact found people dropshipping this supplier onto eBay. There's no way, shape or form that eBay is over the top targeting people that are selling Appliant Zone onto eBay. It's just not going to happen. There's really no way for them to go out and target every single type of supplier. Separate your eggs across different baskets and go out of your way and keep your store in great condition and you shouldn't have any issue using suppliers like this. So as you go through these lists of suppliers, you will notice that some are good, some are better than others, and some, uh, you know, the links might not even work. One thing about SKUGrid is that they really only put websites on or suppliers on their website that people ask for. So you need to realize that the majority of these websites have been used for dropshipping in the past, whether that's past or current, who knows? That's for you to find out. It's kind of the fun in it, although some people don't like the extra work. I like actually going through and finding these suppliers and you know, finding good ones that nobody else is using. So these are the two main ways that I would start drop shipping on eBay in 2020. I have tons of other videos for beginners and other things in the playlist listed up above for you to check out because I can't explain it all in one video of what to do and how to get it, you know, how to set up your store and do everything like that. That's what courses are for. If you are interested, I do have an eBay dropshipping course and I do also have an eBay dropshipping free mini course that you can check out down below if you are a beginner and have yet to get started. If you can learn one thing from this video, it's that first off, please don't be dropshipping Amazon onto eBay. Your account will get flagged and possibly even banned very quickly. There's no doubt about it. It's proven at this point in time, you're lying to yourself if it doesn't happen. Again, also reconsider. And I, I was saying about two, two and a half months ago to be using Walmart as an initial supplier. I would very much reconsider that nowadays. You know, I'm going to be putting a list of about 10 to 15, maybe 20 more suppliers that I think are very viable to be using inside of the course for my students that aren't the Amazons, aren't the Walmarts, aren't the Home Depots, because I don't want people to get started or feel like they have no option other than to start with walmart.com as a supplier. I 
don't think it's a good idea. And I do think it's going to get your account in trouble based off the most recent flaggings that have happened on people's stores. I've changed my opinion and I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong or when things have changed in the process and it seems as if things have changed. So from here, I'd be looking for either wholesale or just obscure retail suppliers. I still have stores running both and they're both fine. If you want to get into wholesale, I also do have a free wholesale dropshipping mini course that you can check out. And I do think it is the most viable and long-term method. If you are serious about getting started, doing it the right way, and you're not in any form of a rush, then I would look into that solely. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it cleared up a lot of the misconceptions that are around eBay dropshipping getting started as a beginner in 2020. If you like this video, like I said, please be sure to smash that like button. Check out the free mini courses below. Check out my Instagram page and DM me if you have any questions. That's where I'm usually hanging out. And also be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification so you get notified of any videos like this that come out every single week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.